because people will feel desperate and will wish to flee their countries. Currency devaluation, financial crisis, mortgage crisis, seizures, eviction, insecurity, legal insecurity, crime, corruption, drugs, uh, uh, human trafficking, slavery, abuse, terrorism, war between countries, civil war, invasion, unpayable external debt, depression, uh, family breakout, ethnic, racial, and religious hatred, uh, anarchy, insecurity, theft, social manipulation, lack of information, media management, degradation of behavior, suicide, mass suicide. All of them are all current, and yet we have become used to what is monstrous and diabolic. And all this will become ever potentiated because the crisis is not present just in a single country, but global. It is affecting all countries concurrently. So anyone who wishes to flee violence in a given country won't have where to go. A decade ago, Argentina said, well, let's go to Europe. Soon, Europe will be a more fearful hell than that we may have in Argentina. So I clearly agree with Harrison, and his talk was most interesting yesterday. This rise and fall of science results from its being based on Roman law. In order to avoid genocide, I mean, we see that whenever there is a principle of action, and Harrison clearly put it yesterday, whenever Tolstoy uh, proposed it, I mean, there is a reaction that goes against change to going to, uh, back to civilization. So the most important thing is to uh, uphold what was done in Argentina, free mandatory uh, education and as instrument for power and domination. This is what uh, gave rise to this cave, to this uh, law school, which is beautiful. When entering this uh, building, no one would dare question uh, this. I mean, imagine this. I'm an agricultural scientist. 30 years ago, uh, biological sciences were at the same stage as social sciences are today. You presented a paper on anything, and uh, me, people from the academia, academia were barbarians who would attack the presenter for the development of any hypothesis. Fortunately, these scientists evolved significantly because of the significance of events which generated a shift in their attitude and because of people like Popper and other epistemologists who gave rise to a true development in the um, uh, scientific knowledge. This has not taken place in social sciences as yet, however. So the main uh, weapon is free public and mandatory education that will spread out to all areas, and especially to all peoples and to the young. Here, like in Spain, we provide education to citizens, uh, teaching children since early childhood that the first duty of a citizen is to pay taxes. Let me clarify that the Salamanca School, in its uh, uh, peak with people like Juan de Mariana, said it is a duty of a good Christian to uh, kill a despotic king, one who may ch wish to charge uh, taxes. Charles V would not be able to get a single coin from the Spanish. He was desperate because despite he had a foreign government, the Cabildos managed the economy in each region, and that made uh, Spain a big empire. Not only was uh, economic uh, science and law science uh, had to be corrupt, but also the big science of civilization had to be corrupted. corrupted. As David Hume says, Civilization is the learning of history. So what had to be corrupted was history. It is uh, precisely through the arrival of nationalisms that Argentina, Mitre, and Sarmiento adhere to the French-German historiographic school, which says 
lie if necessary. And uh, which also says that uh, history is built in order to achieve uh, patriot trust for the union so that people will give their lives for the nation so that they uh, will be send the people to death inventing wars such as the war against Paraguay. 19,000 Argentinians died in Curupaití, people who populated the Argentine Pampas. And this is clearly noted in Martín Fierro, how these people would uh, be taken to their death, that is the Paraguayan War. This is the ultimate goal of history, and that's why it is necessary to uh, corrupt history. This is, I mean, there's a phenomenon which we need to take into account. This is a quote from St. John. Men won't see beyond what they have learned. And notice this, the dean was, was uh, yesterday speaking about land and uh, housing, and evidently she doesn't understand a thing. It's a different language we are speaking. She's an educated ma woman like many other. Of course, all lawyers and all pre-Copernic and cosmologists were wonderful scientists, but they were based on the wrong principle. Now then, if they brought Copernicus, what would they tell him? Look, we have a big fuss here because see what happens with all the orbits. This is a real mess. The, see the social, political, and economic orbits. I mean, they are convoluting all the time. Can you check this and work on it? But mind you, do not go over the basic principles because it is clear that we are in the center of the Earth. If we weren't, it would mean that we are traveling at the distance of, I mean, at a speed of 42,000 kilometers per hour. And that's impossible to accept even today. So this phenomenon causes science when it doesn't allow for the revisitation of uh, foundational basic principles not to evolve them. It is constantly uh, working. The civil code is being amended today. Big changes are being brought about, which may be positive, but this is what uh, Lampedusa would call gato pardismo. What doesn't change is the principle of order that the civil code itself destroyed. The Argentine civil code destroyed the rent system and brought us back to pure Roman uh, law to have a hierarchical society. If everything is revisited but the foundational principle, nothing works. Now then, when universities like these sh witness this division between the right, which wants to uh, uphold the Roman equality before the law, then so, um, societies are upheld by the left, which want, through law, to generate changes so as to balance that huge imbalance, uh, and they want to do so through legislation. The right will then start to develop think tanks. What are think tanks? Yet other groups that will, by hiring the best experts, to reaffirm these principles. And this is the constant that we are witnessing. Men won't be able to say more than they have seen. It just says the fastest, most efficient way to transform a smart guy into an asshole is sending him to university. Of course, if uh, he's taught a pseudoscience like positive law, a pseudoscience like the neoclassical school, what we will have are not only stupid men, but just a danger to mankind. Because these are the men who will then manage politics, the economy, and the result may not be otherwise. And they won't be uh, able to see anything else. Alberti says, a free mind of a peasant who is illiterate is uh, better than a uh, Philip II, lawyer for freedom. And also, 
when trying to prevent the enactment of the Argentinian Civil Code and his uh, witnesses it being uh, enacted without discussion, he says there is a literate barbarism which is a thousand times uh, more dangerous than all uh, indigenous peoples in the Americas. That is, they are a danger to civilization. The first to ask for historic revisionism is Alberti, and he says, in the name of freedom, as Lincoln did in the USA, and in the pretense of serving it, our new liberals, Mitre and Sarmiento, in the USA they would say Lincoln and others, have uh, established Turkish despotism in the biography of Argentinians in abstract politics on the May Revolution in history and so on and so forth at the expense of being excommunicated because of the crime of barbarism. Those who oppose the official history are doomed for uh, barbarism. They will be attacked by the rest of, of uh, the members of the scientific community and exposed by, from the Cape. John Adams, on the 50th uh, anniversary of the USA independence, says, there's n nothing of, of what is portrayed in these murals is true. The revolution was not like this. This was not the independence. It has nothing to do. And he says, there's no bigger lie than modern history. And I'm quoting John Adams. See then the political importance of the knowledge of history, says Jaureche, but of the true history. Without it, it knowledge is not possible. The knowledge of the present doesn't imply the impossibility of estimating the future. These are the first who attempt to engage in revisionism. Then comes the second big tool of power, which is the media. George Orwell says, the one who manages the past, that is history, manages the future. Do we have Roman law? We'll end up with civil war. And the one who manages the present, that is the media, manages the past. So here lies the importance of this. There is a big debate in Argentina today between uh, monopolistic groups in power and power, sorry. But none of them is revisiting basic premises. They are both within the system, just like the right and the left, and as Henry George says, like a bull clashing against the walls, but without uh, escaping the system. This is a Calabino Ortez who says, every writer comes across a wall that uh, doesn't allow him to move forward. Any Argentinian knows that um, there is a lie in history. What has uh, always been said about the May Revolution is uh, the fact that it was a rainy day when freedom was in, uh, promoted, that people were carrying umbrellas. They questioned the manhood of certain Argentine patriots. But what is not uh, mentioned is that uh, the revolution came to replace ancient uh, law and property by new law and property. Of course, like Harrison, I'm pessimistic uh, because in caves, not only in Argentina, but in the world, this is the predominant order, hope versus growth. There is no possibility and no hope that through thinking and reflection we may evolve. I do believe, however, there is a way out. As Ortega y Gasset put it in the French prologue to the revolution of the masses, he said, I, I am myself and my circumstances. And unless I spare these circumstances, I won't spare myself. Unless we change the legal order and we move to a legal scientific order and a scientific uh, economy, the classical one, no one will be spared and will escape. Since this is a phenomenon that results in civil wars and wars amongst nations, that is, true crimes against mankind, 
the responsibility, uh, I mean, intellectual responsibility is the biggest of crimes. Butchers, whether they be surgeons, I mean, butchers will come out in the various situations. Whenever the uh, tension grows, butchers will come out like mushroom after rain, and they will do what people want, that is put an end to the problem because, of course, you can live in a certain state of uh, disorder, but when the situation turns into chaos, you need that. I mean, intellectual responsibility is a crime, and for members of the academia who uphold this order and who do not allow uh, a revisitation of basic premises in law, the economy, they should be uh, brought to court for crimes against mankind. This is the only situation that might put academia uh, or might force academia to, fo to revisit basic premises. And in doing so, there is a big uh, tool, the Russell Sartre uh, courts, which uh, were developed to uh, hear comes against mankind in Vietnam. There should be a court formed by outstanding people from outside the legal sciences, eminent men who may force the legal sciences and the economic sciences as well as history to engage in the necessary changes so that society may come out of this dangerous situation. Otherwise, I agree with Fred Harrison that we have a dark future lying ahead, and this evolution won't take place easily. Thank you.